So it would be nice if there was a memory aid for this. Uh, so the memory aid that we might come up with, looking at the initials, looking at the initials, you can see that inverted images are always real, and upright images are always virtual. Uh, well, this kind of looks like infrared and ultraviolet. That's just a memory aid, right? Obviously, it has nothing to do with infrared and ultraviolet. But as a memory aid, we might think infrared. Inverted images are always real. And ultraviolet. Uh, upright images are always virtual. And then that saves us a lot of time uh, in, in, uh, in figuring out what type of image we're looking at. You still have your notes of the examples that I erased from the board a second ago? Let's look at those again for a second. So we were just looking at a bunch of examples on the board. For example, here, is this upright or uh, inverted? It is upright. Yeah, that's clear just from looking at it. They're both pointing up. And did it turn out to be real or virtual? It's virtual. Right. Well, now we would have predicted that anyway, because ultraviolet, upright, is always virtual. And uh, over here, was this image uh, real or uh, virtual? It was real. Because it's on the same side as the outgoing light. And is it inverted? Yes. Yeah, infrared. So that also conforms to what our previous uh, thoughts were. So all of our examples fit into this general pattern over here. OK. Now we're going to make the lens mirror charts. What is this we're working on? Uh, the lens mirror chart. Um, so in this chart, actually, um, you can just follow along in the handout. I'm going to put this on the board so we talk our way through this. But this is, uh, is going to be the lens mirror chart. So this is at the top of page one of the handout. Top of page one. All right, so the way this works is that we call the left-hand side here, the left-hand side of this chart refers to converging devices. And the right-hand side of the chart refers to diverging devices. Uh, as you can see. And by the way, I've also tried to build the sign conventions in there. If something is converging, who does that tell you about? What variable does that tell you about? If you know that a device focal is... Point. Yeah, and what does it tell us about the focal length? Uh, whether it's positive or negative. Yep, which one? It's positive. Okay, good. So, and how about for diverging? Well, that would tell us a negative focal point. So that's built in the table, too. By the way, I made a note here. Uh, so this point right here is where we would put the lens or the mirror. We would think of the lens or the mirror being at this position. And again, this works for either a lens or a mirror. OK. Um, and then uh, it turns out that um, let's say you have a converging device. And let's say you put the object here. Now, what does it mean if you put the object here? It means that you put the object more than two focal lengths away from the lens or mirror. We put the object here, it would be more than two focal lengths away from the lens or mirror. Well, it turns out that when you put the object here, the image is always inverted, real, and shrunk. Always. Always inverted, <coughs> real, and shrunk. If I put the, uh, the object more than two focal points from the lens or mirror, uh, we're always going to get an inverted and real and shrunk image. We have that in our diagram. How about if I put the object here? Well, if I put the object here, it would be between the focal point and twice the focal point. Uh, and it turns out that that is always inverted, real, and magnified. Uh, if you put the object within the focal point, it turns out that it's always upright. virtual and magnified. Those are the only three possibilities for a converging device. Right? If you have a converging device, 
the object has to be either within the focal point or between f and 2f or further than 2f. Those are the only two possibilities. So this tells us without having to do any algebra what type of image we're going to get. Without having to do any algebra, we can see what image we're going to get. Uh, this might be enough for full credit, but even if it's not enough for full credit, at least we can predict what the right answer is and then convert, can then uh, confirm it with algebra. So it's always be nice to know what your answer is before you start. Now, how about if you have a diverging device? Well, a diverging device is going to give us an image that is upright. virtual and shrunk. Now notice that on this side of the diagram, I didn't bother putting in the distances for f and 2f. We didn't bother putting in the distances for f and 2f here. And the reason is, it doesn't matter where you put the object for a diverging device. It doesn't matter where you put the object for a diverging device. Diverging devices always give you upright, virtual, and shrunken images, whether it's close to the lens or mirror or far away. So there's only one case for a diverging device. And again, that means it's a lot faster just to use the table instead of actually using the lens mirror equation. So by the way, everything that we have in the table could also be figured out algebraically from the lens mirror equation. But as you might imagine, it takes a lot more work and a lot more algebra to prove all this stuff with the lens mirror equation than just to look it up in a table. So it's nice to be able to predict all of this stuff ahead of time. So Without even using the lens mirror equation, we know that an object for a diverging device would always give an upright, virtual, and shrunk image. OK. Uh, let's see. One thing I did in the table is I also put in all the sign conventions. right? For example, for real, I wrote down that i was positive. And for shrunk, I wrote down that the mag magnification was less than 1. And for inverted, I wrote that m was less than 0. I'm not going to do that on the board because things will get too messy. But those are all, that's another, everything is there in the chart again because the sign conventions are crucial. All right, now you don't get to use a cheat sheet, so you need to have some way of uh, memorizing this, because the first thing you should do when you take the test is write down this chart. You should start by writing down this chart, so you need to have it converted to memory, uh, uh, committed to memory. So here are some memory aids. Uh, so first of all, um, as a memory aid, just to come up with something, so we're going to focus on the initials. So notice that it goes real, real, virtual, virtual. Real, real, virtual, virtual, R, R, V, V. Uh, so the memory aid that I came up with is, I don't know where I got this, Ronald Reagan vied for voters. Ronald Reagan vied for voters. RRVV. Ronald Reagan vied for voters. Just as a memory aid, to remember that the two reels come on the left-hand side of the chart and the two virtuals come later on the right-hand side. Okay. Uh, so hopefully that will uh, work for you as a uh, memory aid there. Uh, if you don't like that, I uh, can come up with a, a different memory aid if you're a Democrat or something. But anyway, um, that, that works for me. Ronald Reagan by for voters. OK. Uh, and then once we know that, we don't need a memory aid to know where uh, we, we should be automatic to know where the inverteds are and where the uh, uprights are. How, how does, once we know this is real, we should automatically know this is inverted. And why is that? Infrared. Yeah, infrared. Inverted is always real. And how do we know this is upright? UV. Yeah, ultraviolet. So we don't need a separate memory aid for this if we already know the infrared and ultraviolet. And finally, how do we know that it's going to shrunk, magnified, magnified, shrunk? Well, if you focus on the initial letters, it's a nice coincidence that the magnifieds are in the middle and the shrunks are on the sides. Maybe you're already noticing that. Okay, very good. So S for sides and M for middle uh, is how we can memorize that. So like I said, the first thing I would do when you take the test is just write down this table. Uh, and uh, with a little practice with the memory aids, it shouldn't be too hard to make sure you come up with the right table there, and then you don't have to, to worry about it. This is a really useful table for doing these types of uh, problems. Okay, so that gives us our uh, overall table over here. Um, and we want to see how to use this to solve some problems.